Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we defeated Astos and we got the Mystic Key, meaning we could finally go back and get all the treasure that was taunting us before. Some of it, pretty worthwhile, the rest of it, not so much. A lot of it was really outdated equipment and pretty much useless. But the good thing about that crap is, we could actually sell it for some pretty good gold. And as you can see, I now have 30,000 gold pieces, which isn't too shabby. Especially if you consider we just spent a crap load buying silver swords and all those level 4 spells, level 3 spells. But uh, yeah, don't get used to having this much gold because at this point in the game, equipment and spells start to cost a ridiculous amount. Regardless of how many enemies you're fighting along the way from point to point, you're gonna have to do some pit stops, you're gonna have to do some grinding if you want to keep up in terms of equipment. Which is kind of unfortunate, but if you break it up into little chunks, you know, do 10-15 minutes here and there, you should be fine for the most part. Uh, one thing I want to point out before continuing onwards, I mentioned in the previous video that the silver armor is an upgrade for the fighter. It actually isn't, it makes your absorb lower than what it would be with the iron armor, which is kind of strange because you'd think after the game kind of tells you that the silver armor is really awesome, and you find it pretty much later than you start buying iron armor you would think it would be better but it's not. Instead what you want to do you want to give it to your red mage or your thief. So in this situation I gave it to Lexa. Last thing we did we went to the dwarf cave and we gave the TNT to that one dwarf and he blew up this little piece of land here which lets us go to the rest of the Final Fantasy world. At this point if you want to venture off and do your own thing feel free to do so. Uh, I always used to do this when I was younger. I would go and explore towns I wasn't supposed to go to. I would fight enemies that were way too powerful for me to handle. But uh, yeah. The actual path you're supposed to take is just go over here to the west a little bit to the town of Melman. And you'd be surprised how many times I missed this when I was younger. Kind of stupid when you look back now. I mean, it's just like. I don't even know. It was like three seconds west, but. This is the town of Melman. If you remember in Corneria, I think it was, there was an NPC mentioning how there was something going on in Corneria and that uh, they needed some help. And as you can see, the grass is kind of dirty. There is no grass, actually. It's kind of unfortunate. I guess something is going on here with the land. If we talk to her, if she'll talk to us, she'll mention that Sarda does not fear the evils of the cave. Well, first of all, who the heck is Sarda? And second of all, what cave are you talking about? I'm sure there are millions of caves in this game. Because, I mean, we just came through the Marsh Cave. Is that what she's talking about? Anyways, if we talk to him, he wants us to revive the Power of the Ores. Well, we're working on it, dude. Just, you know, chillax. It takes time to do these things. This guy mentioned that if the Orb of Earth begins to shine again, the Earth shall revive. Oh, I see. I guess because the Earth Orb is not shiny, the earth is starting to die, and that's why everything's not so green. So we need to make the earth orb shiny again, and then everything will go back to normal. Makes sense, makes sense. If we go over here, talk to this old looking guy, he'll mention that if we pass through the Titan's Tunnel, and then go to the south, we'll find Sarda, who is a sage. Which is a pretty important piece of information, definitely keep that in mind. If we talk to him, they say that an ancient people used a stone to make their ship float. Uh, that's a reference to the floater, and it kind of spoils what it does in this game. It actually makes your ship float, or a ship float. If we talk to him, he'll mention that the northern world was once a prosperous civilization, but now it's in ruins. Keep that in mind. And look, there's a dwarf here. And his name is Jim. Wow. First it was Smith, and now we have Jim. Why am I not surprised? But apparently he's here investigating, and there's nothing else over here to do. Uh, one thing you'll notice in this town is there is no clinic, so if your characters die, you're gonna have to go all the way back to Corneria or something, if you want to, Elfland, but uh, try not to let your characters die. And apparently this town was invaded by the vampire, and the clinic was destroyed. Oh, well, there you go. And the town was cursed. So, a vampire. Hmm. It's like Twilight, but in Final Fantasy. Uh, the Titan who lives in the tunnel eats gems. He loves rubies. Unfortunately, we don't have any rubies, and this guy's blocking the bridge. Way to go. Move. Move. So we'll have to keep an eye out for the ruby. And apparently this is Dr. Une, or Un, and I've never heard of him. He's probably not that important. Hint, hint, spoiler, spoiler. 
If we talk to him, he'll mention that the Earth Cave is on the peninsula southwest of this town. Okay. Earth Cave. Maybe the Earth Orb is there. So maybe if we go there, we can make the Earth Orb shiny again. Makes sense. And come here, you. Let me talk to you. The vampire is in the Earth Cave. Oh, well, there you go. So we have to go to the Earth Cave to fight the vampire to make the Earth Orb shiny and lift the curse on this town. Brilliant, we figured it out. If you didn't talk to the NPCs, you would have no idea what you're doing. In terms of equipment in this town, there are some upgrades available. In terms of armor, there is the steel armor, which is incredible. I mean, I can't... What the silver sword is for weapons, the steel armor is for armor. It's really expensive, it's 45,000 gold, which is just ridiculous. But uh, it makes a huge difference. It makes the game a lot easier. Especially considering you can buy one for your red mage as well. I remember playing this, I would grind enough gold to have two pieces, which is pretty incredible. I don't think I had the dedication to do that now. Uh, too many hours of grinding that I don't even want to think about. So I'm going to pass on it for now. If I happen to have enough gold kind of sitting around later on, I'll definitely come back and pick it up. Because it is a really good upgrade to have. If you have a mage that doesn't have the silver bracelet at this point, definitely pick one up. Uh, I have one on Hope, and that's all I really need. And Iron Helmets, Copper Gauntlet, Iron Gauntlet, don't really need the others because I already have some. And whoops, I almost bought something by pushing the wrong button. Luckily, I didn't have enough armor slots. Have you come to the weapon shop? Uh, nothing new except for the long sword, which if you don't have the silver sword is an upgrade over the short sword, obviously. But uh, yeah, if you... I guess if you're playing Dawn of Souls, you want to pick one up because you don't have... Well, maybe not. Because you have the Dragon Sword and whatnot now. Yeah, disregard that. If you want to pick up the Long Sword, go ahead. I have the Silver Sword, so I don't feel the need. What this town really excels in is White Magic. Especially level 5 White Magic. There are some incredibly powerful spells here. All of them are really useful, and you're forced to pick only three. Which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, first off, Heal 2. It's just like heal, but better, but this is the kicker. There's a bug in the code that if you use heal 2 when you're in a battle, it actually functions as a heal 3, so it heals a lot more. So you can exploit that to heal some pretty significant damage. I uh, definitely want to pick that up. Uh, harm 3, just like harm 2, does damage to undead creatures. I don't recommend picking this up just because harm 2 is pretty good at taking out most undead creatures for the time being and even later on and I mean if you want to pick it up that's fine but I'm not going to uh, life this is an incredible spell as well this is the only way you can revive your characters outside of a town so if you're in the middle of a dungeon and a character dies say your fighter dies heaven forbid you can use the life spell and he'll be right back and it's not like other Final Fantasy games where you have Phoenix downs and whatnot this is the only way you can revive your characters outside of town. So I can't stress that enough, you want to pick this up. And lastly, Cure 3. I didn't pick up Cure 2 from a weight mage before just because I felt it wasn't very good, but Cure 3 is the complete opposite. It is incredibly good. I keep saying incredible. This is now the Incredibles with the fork. Yeah, never mind. Pick up Cure 3, it heals a lot of hit points. If you take a huge hit on your fighter, you definitely want to pop that off to bring him back to full. And it's going to be a really useful spell even later on in the game. So I think I'm going to pick up Cure 3 now. And I'm also going to pick up a Heal 2 as well. And should I buy the third one? Yeah, I think I will. I'm just going to go ahead get them now while I can. And as you can see, I'm down to 6,500 gold, which is just not a thing at all. Uh, fortunately, black magic isn't so good here. There's only one good spell you want to pick up, and that's Fire 3. Uh, Bane is an instant kill spell. It has a pretty low hit percentage, so I don't really recommend using it. Uh, warp is pretty interesting. What it does is, if you're in a dungeon and you use it, it'll warp you not to the exit of the dungeon. That would just be overpowered. It'll only warp you one floor above. So if you're on the third floor and you use it, you'll be on the second floor. For the amount of spell charges that it would cost to get out of a dungeon, it's not worth it. I mean, in certain extreme situations where you're in an emergency crisis, I could see it being useful, but uh, I'd rather not get it. 
And lastly, slow two, not really useful at all, so don't bother with that. Uh, fire three is the one you want to pick up. But that's pretty much it for this town, so let's head over to the Earth Cave. And then we can take on that vampire and restore the Earth Orb to its former glory. And there are a couple new enemies here on this continent, so hopefully we'll come across some of them, spice up this episode. And we have the Grey Ogre, which is actually green, so the name could fool you. You would think it would be Green Ogre, but it's not. It's weird like that. I don't know why they do this game like that, but uh, what can you do? And they're not too tough. You can actually find some of them uh, near Elfland if you kind of grind enough. I'm sure you've, you the viewers that are following along have noticed that. But uh, just like an Ogre, Ogre, they don't have any special abilities. They do hit a little bit harder, but nothing you really need to worry about. Maybe focus on the Gnomer Ogres first, that way you can kill them off. But yeah, I'm not too worried. Four hits, wow. Pancake's starting to hit quite a few often times now. Which is good, because then he'll start doing some decent damage. Which I've been sorely lacking. And this should be enough to take him out. Yeah, four damage, that's nothing. Bam, easy. They do give some pretty good gold and experience, so if you are grinding for the steel armor, that's one way to do it. Also, if you go to the Peninsula of Power now, that you're like a higher level, that's also a great way to get some gold in order to uh, afford the steel armor. But if we come down here and head over this way, we have another new enemy, the Shadow, which can cause darkness on your characters. Uh, bugged in this game, so you don't have to worry about it. These are actually really weak. If you want to use one harm spell, it should be enough to take them out. Or if you just want to use your normal attacks. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be too worried about them. See, 50 damage and it's dead. Probably not even worth using a harm spell, but uh, yeah, look at that. Nothing. Peanuts in terms of experience. If we head over here... This is not the Earth Cave. This is actually the cave with the Titan in it. We can't actually get past the Titan until we have the Ruby, so we're going to have to come back later. So let's leave here for now. So to actually get to the Earth Cave, we want to head down this way. I believe so. Yes, this is it. Okay. For a moment, I thought I was getting lost, but that's not the case. As you can see, it's a nice big cave, and it is quite a dungeon. It's not as tough as the Marsh Cave, though you do need to keep in mind of some different areas in here as you go along. Uh, it's definitely longer, there's a lot more places for you to get lost. So uh, I think in the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1, we're going to take on the Earth Cave, we're going to kick some vampire ass, and we're going to return the town of Melman to its former glory. Until then, my name is Paper Napkin, take it easy folks.